drank from the chalice of the Lord and became the friends of God. Light will shine forever on your saints, O Lord. May all your works praise you and your saints bless you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Light will shine forever on your saints, O Lord. The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven. The saints who followed the footsteps of Christ, they rejoice with him forever. Because they shed their blood for love of him. Light will shine forever on your saints, O Lord. Come you who my Father has blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. The foundation of the world. Light will shine forever on your saints, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles, that as she has received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive even to the end of the world an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After three months, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island of Malta. 
It was an Alexandrian ship with the Dioscorsi as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and we stayed there. Thank you. And we stayed there three days. And from there, we sailed round the coast and arrived at Regium. After a day, a south wind came up, and in two days, we, re we reached Putuli. There we found some brothers and were urged to stay with them for seven days. And thus, we came to Rome. The brothers from here heard about us and came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul gave thanks to God and took courage. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. He remained two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when they saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My brother bishops and priests, distinguished graduates, academic authorities, Dr. Mont, brothers and sisters all. For close to nine years, every weekday morning, shortly before 7 a.m., about seven U.S. priests working in various offices of the Holy See Curia would leave their residence and drive over to St. Peter's Basilica and celebrate Mass, usually in Italian, because if any of the faithful joined us, that would be their language. It was wonderful to be in the Basilica at that hour. There was relative quiet, a certain order, and Mass being celebrated at the many side altars. The Basilica is always imposing, but on those mornings, it was a genuine place of prayer. The Basilica of St. Paul is much farther from the center of Rome, and for that reason is generally quieter. It is also much newer by Roman standards, because a fire destroyed the original structure in the 1820s, and it was rebuilt. It seems so appropriate that on this occasion when we honor Catholic Distance University graduates, celebrate Bishop Barron, who will receive the Founders Award, and recommit ourselves to the mission of Catholic Distance University, we recall the anniversary of the dedication of the Basilica built over the tombs of two great evangelizers placed by Almighty God, according to St. Leo the Great, as two eyes of the body whose head is Christ. The passage from the conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles recounts Paul's final journey from Jerusalem to Rome. 
he is in chains, a prisoner for the faith. But the word of God can never be chained. Paul will continue to announce the kingdom of God until he draws his last breath, and his witness still convinces men and women to follow Christ. The passage also seems appropriate for this gathering because of the immense ministry of CDU among the prison population, freeing their spirits and opening them to the message of salvation. St. Paul defines everything in relation to the ultimate goal, the kingdom of heaven. He keeps that in his sights so that he can dwell with the Lord forever. We all need a goal. There are immediate ones. Finish a course. Fill the tables at a benefit. Earn a degree. These serve more lasting goals. Family, future development, additional service to the community of faith but all should lead to that ultimate goal of everlasting life. In the gospel, we contemplate the church represented by the apostles buffeted about by the wind and the waves. They are frightened. We understand their concern in the face of peril and the unknown. We are still experiencing a similar period of concern provoked by the pandemic and many uncertainties, we join the apostles in crying out. But we are reminded, less dramatically than they were, but still with certainty that the Lord is with us. We see Peter recognize the divine presence and venture forth on the water but he is still uncertain. His faith must be purified. Are we not comforted by the image of the great prince of the apostles, humbled by fear, yet grasped by the hand of the Lord Jesus? Dear sisters and brothers, we gather as an academic community joined by the friends and benefactors of this pioneering university. The anniversary of a dedication is always an invitation to rededicate ourselves to our mission, begun in the waters of baptism and then specified by the various vocations that are ours. The Lord renews our confidence in his presence and sends us forth on mission. It is appropriate to congratulate all of the graduates from more than one academic year, to thank the professors, staff, and administration, and to renew the commitment of the Board of Trustees to the noble mission of our university. We do so in the context of this perfect prayer, which is the source and summit of our lives as Catholics. During those years of service in the Roman Curia, we all knew how to begin our day in that same prayer. That morning mass would sustain us throughout the challenges of our ministry. May this celebration offer sustenance to all of us for the fulfillment of our ministry, mission. It may be less dramatic than that of Peter and Paul, but it is clearly our participation in the divine plan to announce the message of salvation to the whole world.
confident in the loving care of our Father, we turn to him with our needs and those of the church. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Give all of us who form the church the strength to give authentic witness to the truth of the gospel as we prepare for the last times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen the resolve of Pope Francis, all bishops, clergy, and Catholic teachers to announce faithfully, courageously, and convincingly the truths revealed by Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach those called to leadership in our country and world to use their governing powers and protection of every person's God-given right to life, religious freedom, and the pursuit of truth and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Enliven the students, board, staff, faculty, and alumni of the Catholic Distance University to multiply their efforts to discover and spread the joy of truth and contribute to a renewal of Catholic faith and discipleship within our parishes and culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless those who so generously support Catholic Distance University with a courageous faith that testifies to the teaching and life of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples tossed and confused by the storms of our secular world, that they will find in the church the calming presence of Jesus' teaching and sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our families and those special friends of CDU have, who have died experience the mercy of God and the saving power of Jesus' resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, save us and strengthen us in the faith of the holy apostles. Hear these prayers expressed in word and in our hearts. May your kingdom come, your will be done, and your saving grace be experienced by all people as we beg through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we bring you this offering of our service, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that the truth handed down to us by the ministry of the apostles Peter and Paul may endure undefiled in our hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed by shepherd, appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, 
upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. John Paul II, and with all the saints from whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm and faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ. The body of Christ. The 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. May your people, we pray, O Lord, nourished by the bread of heaven, rejoice in commemorating the apostles Peter and Paul, for it is through your gift that we are governed under their patronage, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and Our help is in the name of the Lord.
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we have a number of graduates who've come, uh, often cases a long way to be with us. And there are quite a few others, in fact, that we have who couldn't make the trip, but we have a lot who did. And so we're delighted that they're all here. I'm going to call them here one by one, and um, they can come up and receive their diploma. And we'll give them a nice, hearty round of applause at the end. Thomas Randy Bender from Arlington, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology. Joseph E. Bursick from Cleveland, Ohio, Master of Arts Theology. Brian Neil Bobick, Stafford, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology. R. Thomas Bright, Canyon, Texas, Master of Arts, Theology. The Reverend Christopher Bragg Etheridge from Chillum, Maryland, Master of Arts, Theology. Jonathan Edward Gadomsky from Punta Gorda, Florida, Master of Arts, Theology and Educational Ministry. M. Elizabeth Gilson, Stafford, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology. Cynthia Lilienthal, from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada, Master of Arts Theology. Lon Nock T. Nguyen, from Ashburn, Virginia, Master of Arts in Theology and Educational Ministry, Master of Arts Theology. Monica Ann Spencer, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology. Francis Simony Stadler, Oviedo, Florida, Master of Arts Theology. Cynthia M. Stalkup, Ashburn, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology and Educational Ministry. William Thomas White, Alexandria, Virginia, Master of Arts Theology. Eric Reed Huff, Louisville, Kentucky, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Becky Lutz, Buckingham, Virginia, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Gloria Vela Moser, Selma, Texas, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Edward Paul Becker, Springfield, Virginia, Graduate Certificate in Sacred Scripture. Let's give all our graduates a warm round of applause. <laughs> 